Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, as we look around at all your creation, it just testifies of your goodness. Mm-hmm. You are you are an awesome God. You're faithful and true, and you've given us your word. We pray now that you'd use Pastor Izzy to uh, speak to uh, each one of us where we're at, Lord, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to help us understand who you are and how much you love for us and how much you sacrifice for us. Mm-hmm. We ask that now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, guys. Would you turn to Romans chapter 15? We're going to pick up where we left off last week. And this this is a part of Scripture that is, um, you know, Paul is going to share something that, as a, as a minister myself, I really appreciate because um, he's actually going to declare the ministry that God gave to him. And minister is, a, is an interesting, you know, title we put on uh in our culture you know some some guys i i remember hearing this this fella he had suspenders and um his name was gail Irwin. he he's one of the speakers that came to our our bible school many years ago and then to many of our pastors conferences and he's kind of like he'd been a pastor for so long he was like a pastor to the pastors i mean he he really boiled things down in real simple ways and he was talking about how he was on the plane flying to one of the conferences and someone, you know, said to him, hey, mister, what, what you know, what's your name? You know, you just pull pleasantries, you know, like, what's your name? And, of course, it always, it, 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 it seems like they go together. What, what's your name and what do you do? You know, like, what, you know, what's your occupation? And he said, he said, um, he was about to say he's a, a, a minister, and that's a biblical term, you know, but when you say minister in our culture, people are like, ooh, I don't know, do you have a collar or, you know, like you float above the ground, you're holy, what does minister mean? And, and he, he thought, you know, our culture makes it like it's something, ooh, special. When indeed, you know, he looked it up in the Greek and he says the word minister actually means a servant. Like the person who ministers to someone is the one who serves them. They're, they're, what a nice title. What's your title? Slave, <laughs> servant. I mean, that, that's really technically what we are. I mean, Jesus said, if you want to be great in my kingdom, what do you say we, we need to learn to do? Be the servant of how many? All. All. So it wasn't like really prestigious to say, you know, what's your name, Gail Irwin? What do you do? I'm a slave. Slave of who? Everybody. But really, if you're following the Lord, our lives are expendable in the, way, in the sense of, well, they're to be spent for the kingdom of heaven in a way that we actually are here to serve others. And Paul is going to explain his calling from God. Now, this is something that Peter, when Peter was, Peter knew he was going to, uh, when he wrote Second Peter, he actually knew the Lord had made it clear to him that his departure from this earth was imminent. He was locked up. Those of you that don't know the backstory to Peter's demise, he was actually locked up in in prison for the gospel, and he was um, told, "We're gonna, we're gonna." Cru-. You keep telling us about this guy that was crucified, and 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 died, and was buried, and then rose again. Well, we're gonna crucify you, buddy. And so Peter. Peter knew he was going to be... Now, Peter actually does something remarkable to me. Peter says, please, I'm not worthy to be... to depart this world the way that my Savior did, so could you turn me upside down? And they, oh, right here, glutton for punishment. They actually crucified Peter upside down. But when Peter wrote Second Peter, he said that the Lord had made it clear to him he was about to leave. And so he said, I want to, I want to make sure that since I'm going to be with the Lord, that even after I'm gone, you're going to be able to recall what I said to you. And so he gave pointers to the early church, things that I think are, you know, like 
I always I point this out because a lot of times when when you get an opportunity to be with a with a saint that has been around the block for a while, like like there was a privilege to go around Gail Irwin because he had been a pastor so long and and pastored to the pastors and and he knew things that you can only learn by experience. You know, there's something awesome about that that insight that you gain after you've dealt with people for many, many years. This guy had it. Well, Peter, Peter had it too. And Peter says something, knowing that his departure from this earth is imminent, he wrote in 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, I'm going to take you here so I can bridge this into to Romans 15 to show you Paul, what Paul's going to talk about here in this, in this mid of, of chapter 15. But he says here, he says in verse 10, 2 Peter 1.10, he says, Therefore, my brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about something. What does he say to make certain about? Something you need to make certain about. He says about your calling and choosing. God's calling, his calling, and his choosing for you. You need to know what is God's calling, his choice. What, what did God call, or the King James says... God's election. What did you get elected by God to do? Now, it's a good word, election, because I think of elections like if you're going to elect someone, say, at the, you know, for our government, you want to know what, what position are they elected to. If the guy is like a whiz with math and everything, I want him elected, you know, money. Let's get him elected to the part that takes care of the, the treasury, right? And the guy who's good with the with the, uh, what do you call, foreign affairs. Get him elected to the position where he, you know. But don't get the guy who's good with the money doing the job of the other one because he, you know, he might come off as a little nerdy when it comes to, you know, cross-cultural applications and stuff. He might be great behind the, 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 the ad machine but terrible when it comes to public speaking. You got you to gotta find out what, put the right guy in the right place is what I'm saying. And, in the Bible, we get this wisdom passed on to us from Peter the Apostle. Before he dies, he says, I want to make sure you can hear this even after I'm gone. You need to make sure, brethren, that's us, the brethren, all of us that believe, you need to make sure of God's calling and God's choosing, his election. What did he elect you to do? And why do I need to know what he wants me to do? What, what did he call me to do? Well, look what it says. There's a safeguard built in. For as long as you practice these things, you practice whatever God called you to do. It says you will never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be abundantly supplied to you whenever you practice what god called you to do and by the way does he know what to call me to do D does he know what i'm wired for who wired him i mean think about this does the lord know what to put us busy doing i mean he knows our frame he knows what we can handle he he prepared each of us for different callings different elections different choosings his choice now, the thing that's beautiful about God is He chooses us for things that He knows we have. Now, we might even not think we could do that, but, but if He calls you to do it, let me tell you, whatever He calls you to do, He will equip you to, to, to do. And He has been at work in your life when you didn't even recognize or realize that He was getting you ready. You know, my wife says, boy, I'm glad... To me, she'll say in prayer, glad you were called to get up front and talk to people. I would vomit, she says. She says, public, public. well, she's doing that already today because she's got that vertigo thing going on. But, but this, just the idea of getting in front of a crowd makes her just woozy. Like, oh, that would be horrible. And she's like, you get up there every week and you do it all the time. And don't you ever feel like you're going to throw up doing that? And I'm like, not unless I have the flu. I mean, no. But why? Because God called me to do this. And see, he, he, he worked things in my personality to make me able 
to be the one to do this. And this is why it's so important. If we get each person, in, we're, the Bible tells us we are all part of one body, the body of Christ. And there's only one head, that's Jesus. And when the head is connected to each part, the, the head gives the instructions for the parts to work. And when, when we're all just listening to the head, that's when stuff just happens because the whole body begins to work in orchestrated fashion by his orchestration. He does cool things. As, as, but if we don't do the part we were called to do, we don't do our calling, our choosing, we can actually become damaged to the body. I know this might sound weird. I'll use an example. You know, I find it so interesting. God made this body so perfectly you know, with all these little subtle details. He put these little fine things above my eye right here. They're really little tiny little pieces of hair called eyelashes. And these babies are great. They have a function. Do you know that? They, 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 besides just batting them and looking, you know, so handsome, right? They, 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 they're, they're there to, 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 yeah, to keep the perspiration from coming down into my eye and to, Get, you know, the, they, they, they block out stuff from the, you know, little particles from getting in the eye. And they are great when they stay where they're meant to be. But if one of them should jump ship, just one, and decide, I don't want to hang out on the top of the eyelid. I'm going into the eye today. Not any of you have ever had this happen. Just one eyelash. In the eye. Not on the, on the lid, but... Plunk. He goes, I don't want to be where I'm made to be. I'm just going to shift just a little. What a pain that can become. I mean, I did, I'm like, what? Ah, ah. Man, oh. No, what's the matter? I don't know. Something's in my eye. Really hurts. What is it? A rock? No, I don't know, but it's bad. You, you find it, you got to wrench the eye open to get, I can't open it. It just keeps closing. Look, look, all right, you know, it's an eyelash. And you go, what? A thing that's meant to guard the eye has just become a damage. Because it's not doing what it was meant to do. And you know, sometimes in the body of Christ, there are parts of the body of Christ meant to guard and protect other delicate parts of the body. But instead of doing their job of protecting, they're bringing pain to the part they were designed to protect. Not that we would ever do that to, right? To another member of the body of Christ. Let me submit to you, we're all designed to help the other parts. There's not one part of this body that will not jump in on looking out for the other parts. If one part gets hurt, you know, you just walk along and you stub your toe real hard. Isn't it amazing how the rest of the body gets involved? Oh, 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 poor thing. Oh, sit down here. Get me some ice. <laughs> you know, and the whole body starts to, to have, share the pain of that one part what is hurting. The Bible says that's how we should be. When one part of the body is hurting, all the parts of the body should hurt because we are connected. Now, if you know what your calling is, your choosing, your election from God, and you do the part, if you're the eyelash, then stay put on the eyelid. If you're, if you're, if you're part, I know some people are like, I'm just a big toe. Big deal. I don't feel like being down here. I've been here the whole time, my whole life, on this same foot. You know, it's so weird to me that the devil uses this weird criticism. He goes to churches and he whispers, yeah, I went to this church and there was these five people. They were, they were like a click. Like it's a bad thing. Those people were tight, man. They were always together. Like inseparable. You know, you could visit with them, but you can't, it's like they're just connected. Isn't that terrible? I mean, not really. I always do this when I go, you see these toes? See those five digits right there? They've been together 50 plus years. 
And I'm really happy about that. In fact, I think they were designed to be together. It'd be really weird if like my big toe jumped off my foot and said, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't get enough exposure. I want to be more seen, like up on the face, like, like right here, between the, between the eyebrows, you know. Can you just see me with a big toe sticking off the top, you know, a little horn? So, I feel like you got something wrong. Looking a little weird. That's what it's like when people go to churches and the members of the church are fighting to be in positions where they're not supposed to be. You look at it and you go, something's not natural about this. Something's wrong. It's because somebody didn't pass on this wisdom that Peter made sure that he would have ring in their ears. Even after he was gone, he says, you'll be able to recall that I told you this. So I hope that you'll recall this even after I'm gone, that Pastor Izzy repeated what Peter said just to drive home the point that whatever part you're supposed to be, be that part. And if you're put with other parts, there's a reason you're put with them. You know, I'm glad that my big toe is not like right here on my upper lip. It's like those little guys, sometimes I take my shoes off. I'm like, whoa, that stinks. But it's way down there. Thank God. He, he had good wisdom. Didn't he put the smelly stuff way far away from the smeller? Good job, God. But if that toe says, I don't like where I am, and he starts trying to hang out here on my chin, on my lip, I'd be like, buddy, you stink. But see, as the toes hanging out with the other toes, they don't look at each other and go, you stink, you stink, you stink. Because they all stink the same. And they're happy together. And they do their job. You know, sometimes we need to, don't let the devil lie to the church and say, that's bad that those five people are always together. No, it's not. It might be the healthiest thing that, that, that lets that part of the body function. Because those members are giving to the other members what they need, and it lets them do whatever it is God is calling them to do. And but I, I do believe that we get more done collectively than we do individually. But I can't do the collective part until I know what part am I called to be. What am I called to do? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.